hi everyone uh, my name is sam shafiq uh, but everyone calls me sam so the my project was uh, genetic mechanisms of fungal adaptations to space conditions and the title of my presentation is to air or not to air that is the question my supervisors were dr andre angelos and dr marta philippa simon so let's move on uh, we had our first meeting on june 9th as you can see we have a very diverse team my supervisors were from portugal i am from bangladesh uh, in my team sena was from turkey christine was from philippines lilka was from peru and amira was from egypt and there was gabby she was she from usa uh, let's talk about our project the pro project the, base, the basis of the project was fungi uh, as you all know fungi is a widely diverse and ubiquitous organism and it is an eukaryotic organism and it can adapt survive and even thrive in a space locations our motto was to find uh, how it is surviving in harsh space conditions like radiation, extreme temperature, and extreme salinity. So there is a field called astromycology. I was introduced to it while doing this project. I heard about astrobiology, but not astromycology. Astromycology is when uh, we the field on focuses on fungus and how it is surviving in space. And uh, now I will explain my title. So our project was divided in two parts. For the first part, uh, we are instructed to find out as much that data we can to uh, uh, about um, how fungus is surviving in uh, different temperatures, different uh, radi radiation, extreme radiation, extreme salinity, water activity. But after that, uh, we were assigned. We each were assigned different parameters. My parameter was oxygen level. I, I studied how fungus is surviving in different oxygen level and if it is okay to put the air or it is okay to, uh, uh, if it is uh, good to not put the air. So that, so this is why I chose the title to air or not to air, that is the question. So the research I found, there was, there are three oxygen levels, normoxic, hypoxic, and anoxic. Normoxic is normal oxygen, like the situation we are in now. Hypoxic is when we will have trouble breathing, and anoxic is when there is no oxygen. I found out that, that there is a fungus called uh, Candida albicans. It activates glycolytic genes during hypoxic condition. Glycolytic genes are for glycolysis, and glycolysis is part of TCA cycle. So when it is forced into a hypoxic condition, it stops the TCA cycle, and it, uh, it starts the gly glycolysis. Glycolysis and TCA, TCA cycle both are involved in energy production. So when it cannot uh, fully produce energy, it uh, keeps on go keeps on going through the part where it can produce energy partially. So it it never stops. It adapts and uh, keeps on going. Then another fungus called Cryptococcus neoformans. It uh, the transcript of genes here involved in sterol, heme, and fatty acid metabolism are up upregulated during hypoxic condition. So this is uh, this is like humans. We humans are uh, our human body is, uh, starts to burn fat when you starve. This fungus does the same. And there was another case, uh, the, a fungus called Aspergillus fumigatus, develop virulence while adapting to hypoxia. Uh, virulence is when it becomes more infectious. So it is a more worrying case. Then I will come to anoxia. I found a paper where a fungus called Tritratium candolins. It uh, showed ultrastructural adaptation under electron microscope uh, under um, to anoxic condition. Ultrastructural adaptation means it showed uh, more uh, hyphal growth, more filamentous growth, and it become more dangerous actually. Uh, so it is a worrying case. And the most interesting thing I found uh, during my research was reoxygenation. There is a paper where a fungus called Trichoderma reese cells lost viability under anoxia but regain full function under reoxygenation. I'm going to explain the reoxygenation part next. In the research needed part, so the fact is um, space environment is anoxic, but space stations have oxygen. Think about it. There is not much research on fungus. Uh, as much as I found, uh, um, there are more millions of fungus, but there are not much, much research on uh, fungus on anoxic and hypoxic space. So if for us, Suppose that we, there is a fungus that we are not that worried about. It, it uh, accompanied the um, accompanied in a spaceship and rocket, and we thought that this is the, the this fungus will not survive because the space is anoxic. It cannot survive without oxygen. But after going to the space, it reactivated. 
it uh, after the uh, when because the space stations have oxygen when it is supplied with full oxygen it becomes reactivated and then it can affect astronauts health it can contaminate and destroy infrastructure it can add up and it can become more infectious then another thing i found out that i'll quote the paper more than 68 percent of the genes that are affected by oxygen availability have not yet been assigned a functional role in a specific biological processes so uh, there are many genes so suppose there is a gene a we know what gene a does in hypoxic condition normoxic condition in anoxic condition but we don't know what gene a is for human body or fungus so there is a very good research scope where we can find out how each gene a behaves in each different oxygen condition and after reoxygenation so there are some knowledge gaps and reoxygenation is a really potential future research focus then another thing i want to talk about is biofilm biofilm is a sticky structure of microorganism on surface and biofilm structures are really hard to evade and uh, uh, and they do not respond response to antimicrobials well i found a paper the where the fungus candida parasitosis and uh, and the and their gene rbt1 the rbt1 gene what rbt1 gene does is they induces hypoxia and biofilm formation but if you can knock out uh, an orthologue in rbt1 gene orthologue is something that is part of the gene but has some difference so if you can or or knock out an orthologue from rbt1 gene it can reduce the biofilm this is the only paper i found out with very good information on biofilms in a hypoxic condition so i was thinking about what if uh, biofilm for structures are formed in a space station if uh, suppose we are uh, we are planning to colonize mars and there if i if there is a biofilm formation in space station and the space station reaches on mars and mars can be also infected by these biofilms and it can be really hard to stop this infection so then the whole universe will be in danger so i thought this is a very good research focus and there is vacuum and water activity i found out that there is not much research on vacuum and water activity which can be a good thing to plan safer and more sustainable future missions and the most fun thing i'm going to explain the difference between anoxic and anaerobic conditions when i was doing i was assigned my parameters i was doing the research i i came i saw these two terms frequently anoxic and anaerobic anoxic means no oxygen and anaerobic means no air so i thought uh, why this is different because if there is no oxygen and there is no air if there is no air there is also no oxygen and anoxic is anoxic means no oxygen so why this is different uh, first i talked to my lab mates my friends and most of them agreed with me uh, I, i didn't search on the internet because i wanted to hear different perspectives so i talked with my friends first then i emailed my supervisor dr simwas about it and then she cleared that difference between anoxic is anoxic refers to environment and anaerobic refers to organism so when you are listening to this word listen to what you are what the topic is if there is if they are talking about environment and climate that they are talking about no oxygen and if they are talking about in an organism then uh, then an anaerobic it means that no air so uh, this may be a really known topic to uh, all of you but uh, this is this is something i learned through this project and this is a lifelong take lifelong lesson i will take with me so here are some references i put down uh, there is a google doc you can check out for the if you want more information and there is a paper my uh, supervisor supervisor dr antiron and dr simas recently published the relevance of fungi in astrobiology research astromycology please check out this paper this is really informative and last but not the least acknowledgement i would like to thank blue marble space institute of science for this wonderful opportunity not only for this project uh, uh, that i learned but because for the ethical class for the communication class and for introducing me to a whole new coding language called unix um, i'm i'm grateful to all of you then i am thankful to my supervisors my supervisors are really friendly no not only they help me through this project they help me through my problems i shared with them they advised me what i should do and they cheered me on in my problems and they shared my happiness with me my sadness with me so they were they were really good friend and really good advisor and my teammates 
my teammates Sena, Gabby, Amira, Lilka, and Christine. I, I believe we, we have become lifelong friends and I hope to meet with you all someday and my supervisors and people from BMSIS. Thank you for everything. This was one of the best summers of my life. I, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, so this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, I would like to take. I would love to take some questions. Wonderful, great job, Saima. Thank really you. Really great talk to get us started for the day. Um, I think so. We already have some things going on in the chat. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can feel free to unmute yourselves. Um, I think maybe raising hands might be best, so I can call on people. I see Sanjoy has his hand up immediately. Sam, this is a really good presentation. Thank you very much. I had forgotten the difference between anaerobic and anoxic, so I really appreciate the reminder. That was great. Uh, my question has to do about the uh, the virulence, the increase in virulence that you were talking about. Um, it's not the first time that I hear that organisms in space become more virulent when they are in the space environment. Do you have a sense of why that happens? Um, why? Okay, I think that. See, a life wants to survive. If uh, if I am threatened and I'm, because I'm, I'm a living organism wants to survive, and because fungus has a, fungus is a living organism, it it doesn't want to die. It it adapts and it wants to survive and become it becomes more virulent because it becomes threatened when it sees that the condition is against it and it may die. So it becomes it feels threatened. So it uh, increases its power to adapt and. Uh, increases its uh, morphological growth, phenotypic growth, so it can adapt and so it cannot be harmed again. Uh, is, it, uh, is this a good answer? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, I see another hand up, where is it? Um, Priya. Uh, that was a really interesting talk, and I'm going to come at it from a microbiologist perspective. Uh, just to add to what Saima was saying, of course, yes, life responds to threats. Uh, but one of the things that they are exposed to is mutagens. So whether it's UV radiation or other radiation, there are a lot of extremes, even just changing conditions of drying or you know such will cause mutations. And when you get mutations, you get offspring or even the organism itself that is going to be different. So whatever can adapt, oh, it is adapt better adapted to that condition will survive. The one that doesn't won't survive. So go back to good old Darwin, who, by the way, could have given some credit to some other people when he kept his their paper in his drawer and didn't review it before he had his published book. We can we can give Darwin credit for this, but Darwin et al. Uh, so natural selection happens, mutations happen. Uh, so keep that in mind. So whenever you're looking at something. Um, there is obviously the impulse, and as a vegetarian, I believe that all of these uh, organisms, including yeast, which is also, you know, eukaryotic like us, and fungi, um, they have a response that they do, and even, even prokaryotes have that, and I think that they do have that response, but the outside has an impact on you, so that was, sorry, just needed to butt in with that. Thank you. Okay, th thank you, thank you, doctor, for your perspective. I'll keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other hands. Um, for me, long term, Sam, people have been thinking about using fungi for growing habitats on Mars and other worlds in the future. I'm curious what you think about that, especially if we if we are oxygenating the habitat, if we're creating a, a, an air filled space for ourselves inside of a habitat built full of fungi in the building material. Do you think that that'd be a good thing or will that be a hindrance to using the fungus for for building materials themselves? I think uh, uh, for what I have learned that there, there's one, we should be more careful. We should, uh, we should think about all the scenarios. If you are planning a space mission, where we should think that what fungus can get there. And if there is any fungus, uh, if, uh, what can happen in under hypoxic and anoxic condition and if, if the reoxygenation part should really be uh, considered, and after that we should be prepared for the any, if any uh, any accidents happen. Like if they adapt, we should have uh, enough medicine. And yes, there should be more research. Uh, what I can uh, I can say that. Mm 